Hey everyone, today we're going to be carrying on with our energy changes topic, looking at thermal decomposition. We're going to be covering what it is, how we can describe it as a chemical reaction using word and symbol equations, and what happens to the reactants and the products in these types of reactions. Hopefully you'll be able to sort of guess the, what the product's going to be before I even have a chance to write it by the end of this video. So grab a pen, grab some paper and follow along with me. Okay, we're going to go over a couple of key terms first that will help us and will crop up throughout this video. First one is the lesson title, so thermal decomposition. Thermal, I've drawn some flames around because thermal reminds me of heat. So it's to do with heating or putting energy in. That has got to be an endothermal reaction because you're putting energy in. And then second part, decomposition, reminds me of, you know, decay, in, in nature, things dying and then rotting and their nutrients going back into the soil in the great circle of life that Mufasa told us about. So decomposition just means breaking stuff down. So if we put these two bits together, thermal, heat going in, it's endothermic, breaking down. Thermal decomposition is a reaction in which a, a compound gets broken down into a simpler form. That's a lot to take in, so let's break this down. So it's a reaction involving heating and it's gonna break down something more complicated and something simpler. So we've got a general formula that we can use here. General formulas, remember, are templates that we use to work out other types of reactions that are the same. So our general formula looks a bit like this. You have a metal carbonate. Now we'll just stop there for a second before we panic. Metals, remember, are anything that is on your periodic table to the left of what I call the um, stairway to heaven. So you've got a little bit like this. So anything to the left is metals. Think of Beyonce, she's got a song about putting a ring on it, rings are made of metal, and like in her other things, uh, her other song, uh, everything that's metal is to the left, to the left. And I know, I'm sorry for making you cringe, but if I do it in class, I can do it here, gosh darn it. Um, so we've got a metal carbonate. Carbonate just means it contains carbon, carbon and oxygen. So you take your metal carbonate and you don't add anything else, you have one reactant in this type of reaction. What you do then is you are heating it. So that's where the energy is coming from. Energy in is endothermic. Then what you end up with is more than one product. So it's a little bit backwards. Usually you have A plus B makes A and B together or you know, sodium and chlorine makes sodium chloride, but in a thermal decomposition, you're taking something that's already built, uh, it's a bit more complicated, it's already a compound, and you're breaking that up into something simpler or, or something, two products that are simpler, made of less elements than the first. So you end up with some carbon dioxide being made, but you also get something called a metal oxide. we break down metal oxide like we did with metal carbonate, we need to use our logical brains and go, well, metal means it contains a metal, so it'll be the same as what you started with. And then oxide, which has come from the oxygen in the air during heating. So rather than having a metal that is attached to uh, carbons and oxygens, you have a metal that's just attached to an oxygen and the carbons become carbon dioxide. Just add that oxygen bit in and before we forget. 
what you'd hopefully be able to do in a test or in an exam later on in your school careers is to be able to work out what the product would be, so what would get made during a thermal decomposition. So we're going to start with putting the general formula at the top and then I'm going to list some different metal oxides and then we'll talk through how we work out what will get made. Just take a second to copy down this little table. What I've done is I've taken the chemical reactions and I've sort of broken them up into a little table that helps us to sort of see where the different bits are coming from and make it easier to memorize them. So different metal carbonates we're gonna look at are magnesium carbonate, lead carbonate. Oh, I just realized that I rubbed off the E. There we go. E. So magnesium carbonate, lead carbonate and calcium carbonate all three of them are going to be thermally decomposed by heating and we're going to end up with a metal oxide and carbon dioxide so the first thing i would do if i was asked to fill in this table is go what can i already work out without having to think very much uh i can see that carbon dioxide is going to be made every time a metal oxide is going to be made every time but i don't know which metals yet so i'm going to just fill in this first column with carbon dioxide So we know that these are all carbonates and all of these are going to be metal oxides. So because I know they're all going to be called oxide, I'm going to write all the oxides in now. Okay, now all that's left to do is to look at the names of our different metals in our carbonates and transfer those over to know what the oxides would be called. You could do this with any metal carbonate that you could think of. Just think of a metal add carbonate and you could work out what the products would be. So if you had uh, copper carbonate, you would make, yes, that's right, imaginary person that I'm speaking to that's just a camera lens. It would be copper oxide and carbon dioxide. Well done. Something you need to be able to describe is what's happening to the atoms that make up the reactants and what make up the products and why it's an endothermic reaction. So we're going to look at a little bit more detail now. The classic example of a, a thermal decomposition reaction that you usually look at will be in revision guides and on BBC Bite Size is copper carbonate. Copper carbonate quite luckily is the same sort of bluey green colour of this pen and what happens is when this is decomposed through thermal decomposition you form your metal oxide, copper oxide and CO2. Kept it black because copper oxide is actually black. Copper carbonate is this green. So this is immediately a sign that this is a chemical reaction because we've had a colour change and we've got a new product that's formed. What I've done here is I've just drawn on a particle diagram to represent these different elements. So I put the copper in um, and I've put the carbon in. I'm just going to put the oxygen atoms now. So as we can see, copper carbonate, if we were to write that as a chemical formula, would be CuCO3. So we've got one copper, one carbon, and three oxygens. What will happen then is then this will be heated. It will thermally decompose. You get the reactant of copper oxide there's our copper atom from the beginning and it's copper oxide so we know that is oxygen so CO and then we've got a C and two O's left over which oh funny that CO2 is carbon dioxide so we've got the carbon atom and the two little oxygens like some little ears either side 
So we've taken the energy that's being put in through heating it is what's breaking these bonds. So the energy being put in breaks the bonds in the reactant. And then some more energy is used to form the product. So though the energy to break the bonds is much higher than any energy that's used to form these products. And then that is more evidence that this is endothermic. There is an experiment that you can do at school to just sort of demonstrate this thermal decomposition happening and looking at the chemical reaction itself. It's pretty cool because you do see some nice colour changes. What you'd need to do is set up a clamp stand with a boiling tube or a test tube in. You'd have your metal carbonate sample at the bottom. You'd have a bung, so a, a rubber stopper at the top with a pipe leading into a little beaker with some lime water in. We want to use lime water because when the carbon dioxide is released during thermal decomposition, we want to prove and catch it and prove that, it's being, that it is carbon dioxide. So if carbon dioxide comes through this tube that's been made, it's going to make this lime water go from clear to a sort of milky white colour. Our energy source for this endothermic reaction is going to be from form of heat from a Bunsen burner, or you could use uh, an oil burner, but in labs you'd have a Bunsen burner. What you do is you would have your sample of your metal carbonate, and then you record what the uh, colour looked like after thermal decomposition and how long it took. So the ones that you might typically look at in school would be copper oxide that we looked at earlier. So you've got your copper oxide, I'm oh, sorry, copper carbonate, it starts off green. After it's been decomposed, it forms a black metal oxide. You could also look at lead carbonate. Lead carbonate is white to start off with. And after it's decomposed, it turns a nice yellow. You might look at calcium carbonate as well. Calcium carbonate is white. And after it's decomposed, you get calcium oxide. And this, sadly, is also white. Would have been nice to have another colour change. And that's the experiment. You would also look at how long they took to decompose and sort of compare how <coughs> reactive they are, but that's something that you would do later on when you're doing GCSE chemistry. That's it for today. So hopefully you've taken some lovely notes and it will give you all the steps you need to have a go at the quiz on Google Classroom afterwards. So I will see you again very soon. Have a lovely day.